Hey guys, what's going on? Ryder Cake here with part two of how to play UFS. This time I'm going to be dealing with plate abilities and keywords. Now, we will get right into it, starting off with uh, the plate abilities. There are three of them in UFS. There's enhances known as E's, forms known as F's, and responses known as R's. So we're going to jump right into those, starting with enhances. Enhances are abilities that modify your attacks either for you or against you, depending if depending on if you're attacking or defending. Uh, they can only be played during the enhanced step, which happens during the combat phase after an attack is successfully uh, played in the card pool and continue to last until both of you and your opponent pass on your enhanced steps and it goes to the blocked step. Enhances can be found on your character card, your foundations, your assets, your action cards, and your attacks. Uh, enhances can be played only once per enhanced step, one on one card at a time. So if you have four copies of card with enhanced, you can play them, but you have to play it one card at a time. So if you have four Nursing the Grudge, you play one Nursing Grudge's enhance, you pass. Your opponent passes back. You play your other Nursing a Grudge, you pass. Your opponent passes back. You play your third nursing grudge, you pass. Your opponent passes back, and you play your final one. That's how the enhances work. Forms are cards that can be pl are played during the combat phase themselves. So that means playing a foundation is considered a form. Playing an attack is considered a form. Playing a asset is considered a form. The only time an action is considered to be played as a form is when it is actually has the F on the action card. Otherwise, most of the time, an uh, action card is used for either a response or an enhance. Now, forms can be played in between attacks when they are on your foundations and your staging areas. So, as an example, you play an attack, you pass and resolve it, then you play the form form uh, ability on a foundation, that's considered a form, then you go back to playing attacks. Okay, now we move on to responses. Responses are when applied whenever applicable. So again, responses are most of the time found on foundations and action cards most of the time. Sometimes they're found on characters, uh, not too often, but it does happen. Uh, forms are only played when applicable and can only be played when they can be played. So, and can only be played once. So if you play an action card that has a response, you've played it and you move on. You cannot play that at response multiple times. You can play the response multiple times uh, on a foundation, but only if you have multiple foundations, as I explained with enhances. So that covers the basic three played abilities. Now we're going to move into keywords. First off, we're going to look at powerful. Powerful is a, on, on an a, attack cards. All of these abilities of keywords can be found on attack cards. Uh, we have, first off, powerful. Powerful gives you plus X attack, where X is the modifier on the thing. So if it has powerful two, your attack will get plus two damage every time you discard a multiple copy. You can discard any amount of momentum you wish, and your attack gets plus X damage, where X equals the rating of the uh, powerful rating. I will be putting uh, the keywords in the comments section below. That way it's a bit easier to read it after you watch the video if you need a quick lookup. S next we'll move on to stun. Your stun attacks will have a rating of, say, Stun 2. You play the ability, and your opponent, your opponent commits X foundations, where X is the stun rating. So if you play Stun 2, your opponent commits two, stun, uh, two foundations. Next up, we have Multiple. Multiple is you discard up to X momentum, where X is the amount of your multiple modifier. And once the momentum is discarded, it goes into your card pool face down behind the attack with the multiple keyword. Those attacks, once played, are copies of the attack copying their uh, speed and their damage. Once a, moment, once a multiple copy resolves, it immediately becomes a face-down card with a blank text box. Now we're going to look at 
some of the response of keyword abilities, such as reversal. After an opponent reversal is an R, so after an opponent plays an attack that is resolved that a player is blocked, you may immediately play a reversal attack after revealing it from your hand into the card pool, and it is played as normal. This attack, uh, this reversal has its own enhanced step and block step and damage step. Once the reversal is resolved, it goes back to your opponent's turn. Any damage dealt from the reversal does go to momentum. All right. Next, we'll go to Breaker. Breaker get, has a Breaker X. So Breaker has again, much like multiple and stun. Your card, once you play it, after you block a card that has the breaker keyword, it'll have a number beside it, like Breaker 2. So after you block with a card, you respond with the name Breaker. Your opponent's next card they try to play will get plus X difficulty, where X is the amount of Breaker. So if your opponent tries to play a card at a 2 difficulty, and your breaker is 2, you block the attack, their next card gets plus 2 attack, so they are then getting plus 4 difficulty. Finally, we will have desperation. The desperation value is when your vitality is at less than half your life rounded down, this card's printed difficulty becomes X. So let's say um, this Chasm Buster has... Uh, desperation 2. If Kyo is at 13 life, which is half of his life rounded down, I can play Chasm Buster here for 2 difficulty as opposed to 5. Now there's also one other keyword. It is known as throw. There are actually two more. Excuse me. There's throw and there's combo. Throw means that your attack has the ability to deal its damage uh, half of its printed damage rounded up, even if completely blocked. So if you have a high throw and your opponent plays out a high block and completely blocks it, you still, de still deal your damage, half of it to your opponent rounded up. Next we have combo. And I'm actually going to have to show you some cards, because combo is often uh, kind of un hard to understand without it being visibly shown. So we have Dragonlifter, who has Combo Kick. Now you see right here it has Combo Enhance. In order for this to be played, it has to have immediately preceding a kick attack. So to play it, you have to play Zime's Wheel Kick first, then play Dragonlifter, and it will check the card pool and then it will get that combo enhance. So combo is your attack combo enhance goes off if the cards in the parentheses are immediately preceding it in its printed order. Another good example is uh, Nightbreaker, which looks for a mid attack and a high attack than Nightbreaker. Most of the time you will see a random mid attack, then Midnight Launcher, which is a high attack, then Nightbreaker. You will only get the combo enhance if all three pieces are together. That about does it for keywords. And we will join us in, uh, in a little bit when we look at a actual full game of UFS where we explain all of what I've talked about in the first two videos as me and Garrett Brett sit down and give you a quick little demo of the game.